How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews, back with a review. We're going to do a review, but it's going to be a little bit more than a review. Um, but we're going to be opening and drinking uh, Pretty Things Brewing. Um, it is their lovely St. Wine Fridge. Wine, wine Fried, sorry. Butchered the crap out of that. Good start. Um, this is a, uh, a brown lager brewed with a decoction method to mark the end of winter. Um... Pretty things. I've done a couple of their beers over the years. They closed down almost three years to the day um, that I picked up this beer. Why did I pick up this beer? Because they are opening a new brewery. A um, little bit of backstory. Uh, Dan and Martha from uh, Pretty Things kind of fought the good fight in 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 the the new beer realm when they opened originally. I think it was two thousand and eight when they opened two thousand nine. Somewhere right around there. Anyway, um, towards the end of their reign up there in Boston doing pretty things, they kind of um, took the kind of pay for play when it comes to distributors and, 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 and the whole beer market to task. Kind of signed their own death warrant when it came to that. Um, they kind of got, seems like they got blackballed and kind of pushed out and stuff like that. So they ended up closing the brewery. Um, and they kind of mold around. Um, you know, I follow them on Instagram. That's the best I kind of... Uh, know about them, but anyway, they kind of mold around, and, and they just announced that they're opening a brewery called Smod. It's uh, I actually have it over here because I'm going to butcher it. It's uh, Saint Mars of the Desert is the name of the brewery. Um, so they've kind of closed shop uh, a few years ago and decided to reopen in Sheffield, uh, UK. Um, and I thought that was awesome uh, because you know a lot of people get done dirty in the industry, um, but you know a lot of people do dirty in the industry too. So when you see good people done dirty, you kind of hope they make a comeback. And, and that they did. Um, when that happened, I was like, okay, I need to break out some pretty things from the cellar. I drank it all. So I kind of went out on a, on, a, on a hunt to go find something to kind of just make a video marking their kind of return back to the beer scene proper. And I found this. It's actually a black lager, 7%, but it has to be at minimum two and a half, if not longer age-wise. So not necessarily the quintessential ageable beer when it comes to um, styles. But is it, you know, a single de decoction um, brewed beer, what that means basically when you do, you know, if you've ever home brewed before, you just basically put hot water in a bunch of grain. <laughs> at, at what you do with a, a decoction method is you actually take a portion of the grain, you heat that back up, take it out, put it somewhere else, boil it, heat it back up, boil it for a certain amount of time, get it to a temp, throw it back in. What you end up is a little bit more kind of residual sugars, a little bit more kind of, you know, robust color, things like that. So there might be enough in here to kind of keep it at least, uh, you know, a couple years. Uh, this did do debuted in 2012 and like I said it closed right around 2015 so this could be anywhere from three to uh, six years old so we'll see what happens um, we'll talk more about the brewery and what they're doing while we do this but uh what else is saying here like I said it's a lovely Saint wine freed and like I said it's a single decoction brown lager beer and uh, seven percent alcohol by volume and that's that there is no markings on here as far as dating goes so I have no idea how old it is Nope. And that's pretty much it. Label-wise, it's awesome. I've always dug their labels. Quite whimsical. I dig them. So, yeah. Let's dive into this sucker. Um, yeah, it's weird. I kind of put out a call to friends on Facebook after I realized I didn't have any of their stuff in my cellar. And uh, a couple of people stepped up. They're like, oh, man, yeah, I have this, I have that. Someone's like, actually, there's this beer distributor that has a case of it. A case of something. He didn't know what. So, I, it wasn't too far from my work. So, I decided to just take a trip up there. And they had this. Um, yeah, index finger. Um, you know, kind of just under that kind of khaki color. Real tight, compact bubbles. And a rich darkness to it. A little bit darker than you expect from just a brown lager. It's more almost Schwarz beer in color. So it's quite dark. Let's get a nose. Oh, that smells fantastic, actually. Rich caramels. Almost a soft, like, lacked oated kind of a subtle vanilla kind of vibe to it. There's a little bit of that kind of sulfur, kind of funky kind of uh, lager vibe to it, but nothing too gigantic. But yeah, that real kind of soft, almost like black strap molasses, um, kind of got reduced even further and cooked off and kind of flambéed to where there's a bit of kind of toastiness to it. Kind of has that going for it, but in a very subtle sense, it's not super in your face. It's a bit more lighter, as you'd expect from a 7% beer. But yeah, that smells pretty damn good. But um, anyway, 
complete that whole story I was talking about went up there. I didn't want to buy a whole case of it because who knows how it's going to hold up. But the guy ended up breaking out a case, uh, breaking up the case for me, and ended up sending me home with one. So that was pretty awesome. So I was kind of pumped about that. I'm going to get a couple more of their beers, but we're going to dive into this one first. Cheers. That held up really well. Wow. Yeah, it's got this rich, spicy. This is really good. It's got this rich spiciness to it. I keep going back to that kind of black strap molasses thing to where there's like a like a peppery spiciness to that sweetness. And that sweetness is almost like when you're talking about molasses versus black strap, I've always made the analogy of it's kind of like milk chocolate versus dark chocolate. When you start getting that black strap, you get a little bit more less sweet, a little bit more uh, uh, less sweet, but rich, if that makes any sense. There's almost a spicy component. It's there. You get that soft kind of lager vibe, that lager yeastiness, that lager funk, uh, funkiness to it. It's got an infinitely creamy body to it. Super well-rounded. Tasty. It's it's delicious, actually. It's getting to the point where they talked about it being here. They talked about a brown lager, you know, a darker lager. But, you know, nothing even coming close to a Bach or even like a Doppelbach. That's where this is virgining towards. That's where it's kind of kind of creeping towards almost like a pseudo Doppelbach kind of vibes where it has this nice, soft, rich creaminess to it with this bit of impact, uh, that epic mouthfeel and the way that spiciness, there's like this nice, rich, herbal, earthy kind of spiciness on top of that sweetness, on top of that richness that just kind of adds an extra component to it. This is aged really, really well. This is a really tasty beer. Wow, I can't believe how well that aged. Um, yeah, um, anyway, uh, back to my story. Um, so anyway, Dan and Martha kind of opened their thing in Sheffield, and like they literally just opened it. It was one of them probably the more uh, heartwarming things for me to see in, in the beer industry is for them to actually kind of make their comeback, albeit a third of the way across the world, so now I can't get their beers. Um, but it's cool to see good people make 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 good. And um, they made really thoughtful, uh, well-done beers. And for to see them bring that to the UK, anywhere regardless, but to see them bring the UK where it might land a little bit more kind of, I don't know, welcomed. <laughs> not as a, it's not a cynical beer scene like it is over here, at least from a distance from where I sit, it doesn't seem that way. It seems like they're going to do well. So it was kind of just a, a good reason for me to kind of track a beer down as opposed to bring one out of, out of my cellar, which I thought I had. And uh, kind of just uh, being homage because they talked about this beer being a mark to the end of winter. It was almost like their um, closing of winter um, opening up to the, the spring and kind of like, okay, here we go. This is, you know, we're going in the spring. Things are being reborn. This beer kind of made sense when I got to that. When I saw the case, I was like, man, I really need to do this beer as a review just because it kind of makes sense. It's kind of closing of winter, closing of that chapter that they had previously and then kind of opening up into uh, into a new era. And it kind of makes sense just all around to me. You know, maybe that's my poetic side kind of, you know what I mean, reaching um, as far as that goes, but yeah, um, you know, you're in for a treat, people of the UK. They make, like I said, fantastical beers. Might be a little bit similar to a lot of stuff you get over there, you know, and very outside of what now would I would say now is the more popular styles. I mean, you know, they're all more about like kind of, you know, traditional earthy kind of as you would see here a black lager or their saison. Or um, they did some of the better barley wines and Belgian-influenced beers out there. So it's cool to see them back, albeit under a different name. But uh, if you're out there in the UK, especially closer to Sheffield, you should definitely um, check them down. I know they're just doing... I've been, I know they're going to be bottling stuff, but I think right now it's just draft only. But like I said, it's uh, Beers of Smod, I believe, is the website. And like I said, it's uh, St. Mars of the Desert. So go check them out. Um, uh, give them a warm welcome. Um, drink some of their beers because they're damn tasty. And if you can make a 7% black lager, decoction method black lager that holds up for several years, then you're doing something right in my book. Um, back to this beer, though. Like I said, 
super surprised at how well it held up. Tasty, rich, creamy, delicious. Virgining in that Doppelbach range, but a little bit more roasty, toasty, and a little bit more spicy. This all around delicious beer. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. It's one of the better dark lagers I've had as late. I mean, the age does kind of put it in its own kind of category, but let's just say it. Yes, it is. Um, I mean, I love me darker. Darker lagers get more they kind of pique my interest. I mean, I like your super clean, crisp, clear lager, but when you get in that Schwartz beer category, not only do I like them quite a bit, I get a little bit more picky. And this one not only is done well, but aged pretty well. Value and availability, I got this for six bucks and change. Uh, if you want to know where it's at, shoot message at me. I can tell you where to go to pick some up, apparently, and leave you with, if you like what, will you like this beer? If you like good, well-made beer with a uh, made guy, made by good people, you know, it's uh, not pulling any punches and it's not trying to be something that's not as just good beer. That's a good thing. It's a good thing when good wins. So there we go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there, if you want to talk about it, Massive Beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, Beer Massive. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a nice little pretty things beer right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.